Hello everyone, today I am going to deliver a lecture on welded joint analysis. That means how to analyze a welded joint that related things I will going to deliver in today's lecture. There can be different types of analysis in uh, welding a structure like uh, it can be static analysis, it can be dynamic analysis, it can be tangent analysis, it can be fatigue analysis. But uh, I will concentrate more in this course which is related to static analysis. A static analysis means the uh, uh, structure which is subjected to a load which does not vary with uh, or which does not vary with time. It is a time independent types of uh, loading condition that you can say. That means here the load does not vary with time. So, that is called a static analysis. So, these are the content of a today's lecture. Here first of all I will uh, introduce about the type of weld joint, then I will discuss about how to select the type of bar joints, that means selection of the type of bar joint, then I will discuss about the strength of bar joint, then I will uh, solve some problem on uh, bar weld. Then I also will discuss about uh, strength uh, calculation of parallel fillet weld and also I will solve a uh, problem on parallel fillet weld. So, first of all uh, the type of joint because this is very introductory things because, be, because before going to uh, discuss about the actual analysis of uh, welding structure first and foremost things we should know the type of uh, weld joint. So, that is why here uh, initially I am just discussing these things. Uh, so, we all of we are uh, very well familiar with uh, different types of well joint. We can categorize this well joint into five different uh, basic joints you can see. These are all called uh, bar joint, T joint, lab joint, corner joint, edge joint. So, here in right side I have shown uh, that uh, what is bar joint, here you can see this first one is called bar joint where generally the two uh, work piece plate uh, or you can say two component of uh, a structure which is lying in same plane side by side that you can say and finally welding is done. Okay. So, these types of joining is called uh, bar joint, the another one is called T joint where generally there is a horizontal uh, plate over there, there is a uh, vertical plate you can say. This is horizontal, this is vertical plate and this uh, two work piece generally we join together by using welding uh, method here you can see. This is called T joint. Uh, why it is called T joint? Because the shape of this uh, structure is T type that is why it is called T joint. Now, the another one is called lab joint, here generally two work piece overlap each other, after that generally the welding is done at is A's you can see. So, this is called generally lab joint because here two overlap plate we are joined together or two overlap work piece we join together. Another one is called corner joint where the two work piece lying in such a way so that a corner is formed, here you can see corner is formed. In this corner generally we use the welding operation and do the welding. Okay. Another one is called edge joint. So, here you see uh, here edge is formed by two uh, component of a structure. So, after that generally the welding is done in this edge that is why it is called edge joint. Now, you see this joint also can have different different types of uh, sub categories. Say so, this is depends on what? This is depends on its uh, type of edge preparation. So, that is why you should know what is the different types of S preparation. Generally, uh, we used to do the following S preparation which is required for S strength requirement and some other design consideration you can say. So, these are the following uh, 6 different S preparation which are most commonly used in actual field that is why I am showing here. One is called a square edge, say so, you see a square edge means at the edge of this joining surface which is generally perpendicular to the plane of this surface you can say or that means this well face or you can say this well face also sometimes is called feying face. Okay, this is also called feying face. So, you see this feying face generally perpendicular to the surface of this well plate. 
So, it is called A square S preparation. Another one is called Vivel S preparation. Vivel S preparation means this is done by using uh, some milling operation or you can say by some grinding operation also you can make this Vivel S or uh, some other uh, machining operation also you can make this uh, Vivel S preparation. You see this angle between this perpendicular line and this angular uh, A's is called generally Vivel angle theta. Now, there can be single bevel types of S preparation, there can be double bevel types of S preparation also. Double bevel types of S preparation means along the mid thickness, mid thickness of this plate, top side on bevel operation and bottom side also another bevel operation is done. So, this is called double bevel is S preparation. This double bevel S preparation generally we use to do once the plate thickness is little bit higher side higher side in the sense which is generally we consider there is a general rule once the plate thickness is more than uh, 30 mm, we are generally there uh, we prefer to use doubles we uh, will S preparation. There we can use chamfer S preparation, chamfer S preparation means where which is a combination of you can say Vivel types of S preparation as well as a square S preparation that you can say. If that means the shape of this S preparation is chamfering type that is why it is called chamfer S preparation. Uh, now, uh, there can be uh, J group S, S preparation, here you see this is J group S preparation. The shape of this S preparation is like J in nature that is why it is called J group S preparation. Okay. It is like this right side if you draw the S preparation, then you can see it is generally J in nature this shape. Okay. This is called J group S preparation. Uh, once the plate thickness is higher side, then we can make double J group S preparation. That means, both the side of this plate we can make J group. So, the as two different S group we are making both the side that side is called double J group S preparation. So, these are the very common uh, S preparation which we generally use depending upon the plate thickness uh, and you can say depending upon the situation. Okay. These are the things which is required for strength requirement and some design consideration. Now, uh, we will discuss little bit in details about bar joint because in this uh, lecture I will show you how to analyze bar weld joint as well as plate weld joint. So, first of all we should know what is a bar joint. So, bar joint is formed when generally two uh, pieces to be welded are laid side by side. That means, here you see this is one piece of weld, this is another piece of uh, work piece this is generally laid side by side after that generally welding is done in between. Okay. So, it can be defined as a joint generally which is formed between two component which is generally laying approximately in same plane you can say it is generally laying approximately in same plane. Okay. The same plane. So, this bar joint generally depending upon this S preparation can have different different sub category like here you see this first one is called bevel groove bar joint, this is double bevel groove uh, bar joint because these are all based on this above different types of S preparation. So, depending upon this S preparation it can have different different names. So, to hear the name itself you can say that what should be the S preparation required, what should be the shape of this uh, groove that you can easily be able to identify that are just I am showing this thing. Okay. So, this is generally called V group bar joint, double V group bar joint, J group bar joint, double J group bar joint, U group bar joint, double U group bar joint. Here you see the shape of this weld group or you can say joint uh, general shape of this joint is U in nature that is why it is called U group. If both side this U is made that is called double U group bar joint. Here one thing you should keep it in mind this bar joint generally is one of the most widely applicable joint. Here uh, another things also you should keep it in mind uh, generally this bevel group and V group are easier to prepare, but what happens this J group and U, U group generally required costly machining operation which is more time consuming also. Okay. That is why this bevel group and V group S preparation are widely uh, used. Now, here I am going to show you what should be the selection procedure of the type of bar joint. Here one thing you should keep it in mind, this selection of bar joint that means what should be the S preparation required in a joint in case of a bar to weld. Here one thing you should keep it in mind, it is dependent on thickness of the plate. 
in some uh, design book there is some uh, general rule you can say. Uh, in some design book you will find that uh, when the plate thickness is less than 5 millimeter thick then for that case uh, generally no S preparation is required. So, uh, here in first uh, example that means in figure A I am showing here there is no S preparation is required that means here we are using S square S preparation and so here uh, whatever the welding we do here that is called generally a square bar joint. Once the plate thickness goes from 5 to 25 millimeter then there is required to make S preparation what I am telling understand. So, here I have already written here. So, once the plate thickness increases then this type of S preparation also changes. So, you see 5 to 25 millimeter thick plate here we can do uh, by using V group S preparation that means here we used to do Vivel S preparation here you can see in figure uh, B I am showing. So, here uh, the shape of the well bead is V in nature you can see. So, that is why it is called V group uh, bar joint. Here another things also you can uh, keep it in mind that means when the thickness of the plate is more than 20 millimeter then the edge of the two plate are machined to form a U shape. That means, uh, once the thickness of the plate goes above 20 millimeter there we can use uh, what it is called U group types of S preparation what I am telling understand we, there we can use U group types of S preparation. Now, here another things also you should keep it in mind when we should use double sided V group S preparation or V weld that also we should know. So, double V bar joint generally preferable once the plate thickness is more than 30 millimeter. So, once the plate thickness is more than 30 millimeter a double welded V joint is generally used. Uh, this uh, joint is generally welded from both the side of the plate. So, that means from top side as well as from bottom side we can uh, do the weld. Okay. So, these things just you should keep it in mind because this is the procedure which we should follow uh, during the welding operation. Now, we will discuss about fillet weld. So, what is a fillet weld? A fillet weld generally consists of an approximately triangular cross section joining two surface at right angle to each other. What does it mean? Here you see. So, let us this is uh, a plate. So, another plate is uh, right angle to uh, like this, uh, this is a vertical plate, this is a horizontal plate. So, here generally the fillet welding is done in between two surface which is generally per almost perpendicular to each other. So, this is so this is one surface, this is another surface. So, here generally this fillet welding is done, here you can see. In this case also here I have shown, this is this is one plate, this is another plate. Here you see at this edge I have done a fillet welding which shape is triangle in nature. So, the, this, these things you should keep it in mind. So, a fillet weld consists of an approximately triangular cross section. So, this weld cross section if you will see its shape is generally triangle in nature. Okay. Now, uh, depending upon this type of uh, load acting on a structure, this fillet weld can be categorized into two different categories. One is called transverse uh, fillet joint, another one is called parallel fillet joint. So, uh, so what is transverse fillet joint? Transverse fillet joint means here, let this is the weld, weld direction you can say. Along this direction welding is done. So, and this force is acting perpendicular to this well direction here you can see that means the loading direction is perpendicular to the well di direction that means transverse direction. So, once the uh, uh, structure which is subjected to load which is perpendicular to its well direction that types of fillet weld is called transverse fillet weld. So, here I have defined this thing a fillet weld is called transverse fillet weld if the direction of the weld is perpendicular to the direction of the force acting on the joint. That means, here whatever the joint is formed, here this load is acting perpendicular to this joint you can see. Now, here one thing you should keep it in mind in case of fillet joint, in case of fillet joint uh, a single transverse fillet joint is not preferable. You see let this is one plate, this is another plate. So, here a triangular uh, fillet joint we made. 
So, this is called a single transverse plate well because here the load let is acting in this and this direction, this is transverse direction because here the well direction is like this. So, this loading is perpendicular to this well length, loading is perpendicular to this well length. Here once this uh, flat is done in one side only, then this is called a single flat and depending upon the loading condition, it is called single transverse flat joint. This single transverse flat joint generally not preferable because the edge of the plate which is not welded, here you see uh, this lower plate generally this edge is not welded here. So, which is not welded can wrap out of shape. So, the edge of the lower plate is free to deflect here. That is why what happens this single transverse plate is not preferable, this you should keep it in mind. Why? Because this can wrap out of shape. That is why uh, this double transverse plate generally preferable. So, therefore, here I have written a double transverse plate which is shown in figure uh, B you can say uh, is more preferable. Okay. Here you see now I am going to discuss about uh, longitudinal uh, flat weld. So, in longitudinal flat weld here the loading direction is parallel to the uh, length of this flat, this you should keep it in mind. Okay. So, a flat weld is called parallel or longitudinal types of flat weld. If the direction of weld, this, that means here the direction of weld is this direction, if the direction of weld is parallel to the direction of the force acting on the joint. Uh, this force here you see, here this force is acting which is parallel, which you can see this is the uh, force uh, line of action which is parallel to the uh, flat weld length, okay. that you can see. So, here this uh, loading direction and flat weld length direction is parallel to each other. So, these types of uh, fillet weld is known as longitudinal fillet weld or you can say parallel fillet weld. Okay. So, there are uh, generally two different types of cross section of fillet uh, weld we can get. One is called normal uh, fillet cross section. This normal fillet cross section generally is a isosceles triangle. This triangle have two sides with equal length, this you should keep it in mind. So, whatever the side length is uh, in horizontal direction, in vertical direction also the side length is same. The, so, this is a isosceles right angle triangle. And a, another, another uh, types of uh, cross section of flat weld is generally called convex types of flat weld which I am showing in this figure B, you can see. So, this uh, convex uh, flat weld uh, generally uh, require more filler material as well it, it require more lever also. So, a convex fillet will uh, generate more stress or you can say uh, there is more stress concentration in a convex well compared to uh, triangular or you can say normal uh, fillet well. Therefore, normal fillet well is more preferable uh, over convex fillet well, this also you should keep it in mind. Why I am uh, discussing all these things? Because this will be required once we go for analyzing this uh, welding structure. Okay. Now, here I am showing some other types of joint which is generally done by using this flat weld, flat weld in the sense this uh, shape of the weld is triangular in nature. So, so, one of the joint is called T joint, another one is called corner joint, another one is called edge joint. Here you can see this is the figure A represent the T joint where one is horizontal plate, another one is a vertical plate which form a shape which is uh, look like a inverted T, you can see T letter, okay. that is why it is called T joint. But here the welding is done by flat weld, you see the shape of the weld is triangular in nature. Similarly, this corner weld also is uh, done by uh, flat weld, here you can see Okay, the, because this shape is triangular in nature. Similarly, this edge joint also here the uh, weld shape uh, or joint shape is uh, triangular in nature you can see. So, these are all generally done by flat weld, but this is, weld is flat, but uh, joint is uh, depending upon the position of the uh, two 
component. Okay. Here you see depending on the position of this first two component is shown in figure A is called T joint, then second one is called corner joint and uh, figure C represent the edge joint because here a edge is formed. But the weld which we are uh, making here, this weld shape is uh, triangular in nature which is called fillet weld. Now we will discuss about strength of BART weld first. So, uh, generally a BART weld which is subjected to a load P which I am showing here in this figure let us, uh, this is a BART weld here you see because here two work piece lying side by side and in between generally this welding is done. So, here once this work piece is subjected to a tensile force P here, then the average tensile stress in the weld can be find out by sigma t equal to P into P divided by H by L. What does it means? So, here you see we know once a body subjected to some external force P, then internal to this body in internally there is developed some resisting force which is generally equal to this external force. So, if we take a section x x in this section generally there will be develop a uh, resisting force which generally oppose this external uh, force. Okay. So, if we take a section x x here, so here we are uh, seeing there is develop a resisting force P which direction is opposite to this applied force P, this you should keep it in mind. So, what is called stress? So, the stress is this resisting force, the stress is a stress is represented if it is a normal stress this is represented by symbol sigma. So, this stress sigma we can write as this resisting force divided by its cross sectional area. This cross sectional area of what? This cross sectional area of this uh, of this uh, plane uh, over which this resistance force is acting. Now, here you see to find out the stress in the weld section, what are the thing required to do? Let us here you see a external force is applied P. So, in this weld zone if we take a section cross section, so what should be the cross section here? So, the cross section of this weld will be here you see the cross section of uh, this weld will be what? The cross section of this weld I am representing A w will be your you see A is into L, L is the length of the weld. H is the you can say H is called throat thickness, throat thickness. So, this is the cross section over which this P external force generate a resisting force. If this external force is tensile in nature, so in this uh, weld cross section there also will develop a tensile stress or you can say tensile normal stress. So, this tensile normal stress we can represent as sigma t which is equal to your P, this P should be the resisting force uh, which is acting opposite to the direction of this externally applied load and whose magnitude is uh, same or as externally applied load. So, stress is always calculated based on uh, resisting force inside uh, internally developed in the structure due to external load. Now, this so this stress normal stress we can write as this uh, resisting force P divided by the cross sectional area of this weld. So, what should be the cross sectional area of this weld here? The cross sectional of the area of the weld will be your throat thickness which is generally in case of BART weld this throat thickness is equal to the thickness of the plane. So, here this throat thickness in case of BART weld generally consider as thickness of the weld. Here on things you should keep it in mind that means, whatever the in case of BART welding you can see in case of BART welding the joint is look like this. So, this is actually the plate thickness T or it is equal to your hair throat thickness, but you see above the plate thickness there is some extra volume of material that is called generally bead height, well bead height, well bead height. Similarly, bottom side also there is some extra portion which is generally extruded out of this bottom surface you can say. So, this is generally called bottom 
bid height or you can say it is called bottom reinforcement. So, this portion and this portion is called top and bottom, this is called top reinforcement, this is called bottom reinforcement. Always keep this thing in mind, when we go for analyzing welding, uh, welding joint especially for bar joint, they are generally uh, this upper bulging part and lower bulging part is not required to consider because you see here generally we should consider the throat thickness region for calculation purpose. Here you can see because uh, this plate which is subjected to the load here you can see which is generally uh, subjected along its thickness direction only which is acting along the thickness ok here you can see that is why in this case also here I have written this thing the throat of the well does not include bulge or reinforcement this top side uh, that means this bead height or you can say this bulging portion or you can say this top uh, reinforcement portion. So, this bulge is generally provided to compensate for flaws. So, this bulge that means uh, uh, top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement is required to provide to compensate the flaws if there is inside this well joint. So, from this equation 1 we can write this applied force P which will be equal to your sigma T into H into L. Okay. So, this equation is generally called as a strength equation of bar joint, what is called a strength equation of Bart weld joint or we can say Bart weld. What does it means? Because you see if we know that means okay, the weld have a permissible stress or weld have a permissible normal stress you can say if we consider this sigma t is the permissible normal stress of this well material, then we can say what should be the externally applied load, what should be the externally applied load. That means, if this is uh, this sigma t is the permissible strength or you can see if the sigma, sigma t is the permissible normal stress uh, of well material, then what we can say how much uh, external load this uh, weld structure can sustain that we can beforehand calculate what I am telling you understand. That means, uh, what should be the, uh, the externally applied load a weld joint can sustain beforehand we can calculate if we know the permissible normal stress of that weld material this you should keep it in mind. So, this equation which I am showing here let this, this equation number A is called a strength equation of Bart weld. Now, in case of Bart weld generally there is used some sort of classification uh, rule you can say or you can say there are certain codes uh, like code for unfair pressure vessel which suggests that reduction in strength of the Bart welded joint by a factor this reduction factor is called efficiency of this joint. So, if we incorporate efficiency of this uh, joint, then this strength equation of Bart weld generally converted to here you can see this strength equation of Bart joint generally converted to P is equal to this efficiency into L into T into sigma T. Okay. So, where one thing you should keep it in mind here generally the H is equal to here your plate thickness T. Okay. This you should keep it that means here in case of Bart weld throat thickness. thickness should be equal to your plate thickness. This you should keep it in mind. Now, if we incorporate the efficiency here, this eta is called the efficiency of this bar joint, efficiency of this bar joint and here sigma t is called permissible normal stress of this bar joint, permissible normal stress of weld, normal stress of weld. So, if the uh, permissible stress is, is sigma t, then we can easily find out how much load this structure can sustain if it is subjected to a bar weld. Now, we will solve a problem based on this bar weld. This is the problem statement of this bar weld. 
So, here it is shown that a gas tank, here you can see a gas tank consists of a cylindrical shell of 2.5 meter inner diameter. So, here you see this inner diameter D is given as 2.5 meter, that means this is the let us inner diameter it is 2.5 meter. It is enclosed by a hemisphere, here you see this is one hemisphere, this is another in hemisphere. Okay. So, this uh, gas tank uh, generally enclosed by this uh, hemisphere both side, this hemisphere. So, this is generally enclosed by hemisphere cell by means of bar joint, here you see bar well joint as shown in this figure. So, this is one hemisphere, this is another hemisphere these two hemispheres generally join together with this uh, cylindrical uh, gas container by using bar weld. Here you see this is black color represent one bar weld, this is another bar weld okay? that you can see. Okay. Now you see uh, the thickness of the cylinder shell, so here thickness of the cylinder shell is given as 12 millimeter. Okay. So, determine the allowable internal pressure to which the tank may sustain. So, we have to find what should be the pressure a small let a small pressure P inside this tank, so that uh, the weld should not crack or you can say this weld uh, joint should not fail. Okay. So, determine this allowable internal pressure to which the tank may be subjected if the permissible tensile stress is 85 MPa mega Pascal, that means this weld, weld permissible stress is given as 85 MPa. So, assume the efficiency of the weld joint here also uh, it is given efficiency of this weld joint eta equal to your 0.85. So, what are the thing required to do? We have to find out what should be the internal pressure of this gas, so that it should not fail, that internal pressure a small p we have to find out, okay. what is the internal pressure. So, for finding out these things what we can do, let uh, just I am just uh, taking this hemisphere portion here, here I am drawing, so hemisphere portion. So, here you see, so if we just draw in three dimensional way how it look like just this way I am just showing. This is the hemisphere portion. Now, you see this hemisphere portion it has a internal diameter d which is given as 2.5 meter, you see this 2.5 meter is given and this uh, hemisphere this thickness also given as T equal to 12 meter, 12 millimeter actually 12 millimeter. So, you see, so if we draw like this, so this is the hemisphere thickness, let us say I am just drawing in a little bit bigger way. Now, you see this internal zone, this internal zone it will generally create a pressure projection that is that if we take the projected area of this hemisphere, how the pressure will act. So, if the pressure will act in this projected area like this, projected area like this correct. This pressure generally we uh, this pressure or due to this pressure whatever the force will develop, this pressure force. So, this is generally the pressure P which is acting along this projected area of this hemisphere welding zone region. Now, you see this periphery generally periphery of this hemisphere in inner cylinder subjected to welding. So, subjected to welding you can see. So, what is the total well length here? So, here first of all we will find out what is the total well length. So, total well length of one hemisphere connecting with this cylinder. So, here we are getting this uh, length of the weld which is generally made to connect hemisphere with this uh, cylinder will be your 2 pi into radius of this uh, hemisphere 
or you can say your pi into d. So, the cross sectional area of this uh, weld uh, which is the peripheral uh, cross sectional area of this hemisphere we can say or we can say peripheral uh, area of this uh, cylinder we can say inner cylinder we can say. So, here the cross sectional area of this weld will be your 2 pi r or you can say pi into d into your thickness of the hemisphere or you can say cylinder. So, here thickness of the uh, uh, cylinder or uh, hemisphere is given as t equal to 12 millimeter here it is given already because here we generally consider thickness or throat thickness, thickness of the plate because we know in case of bar well joint we generally consider thickness of the plate equal to your throat thickness is this you should keep it in mind. So, this is our uh, well cross sectional area. So, due to this internal pressure whatever the internal pressure it is applied in this projection area this internal pressure will be resisted by the force acting in this welding zone. The let this is the force acting in this weld zone okay, over the entire circumferential area. So, here I am instead of writing this thing there we will develop a normal types of uh, stress instead of force here I am writing sigma t. So, this internal pressure should be balanced by the stress developed in uh, what is it in weld material. So, from this figure let us say I am representing figure A from this figure if we just uh, write the equation of equilibrium what we can get? We can get this uh, what should be the uh, total force acting in this weld? The total force acting in this weld will be your we know this uh, cross sectional area of this weld into this sigma t into its efficiency. So, what we can write? So, here we can get first of all we will find out this uh, sigma t into pi into d into t this is the cross sectional area. So, this is the well the strength equation I am writing sigma t into pi d into uh, t into its efficiency. So, this will give you all the uh, you can say uh, load which is supported by this well material, which is supported by this well thickness, this you can see, okay, this well thickness, all you can say per peripheral well joint. Now, from here generally we are getting what is the strength equation of this one well joint. So, this strength generally uh, balanced by this internal pressure. So, here you see, so this strength P should be equal to your internal pressure let us small p internal pressure small p into uh, this projected area of this internal pressure. So, here projected area of this internal pressure will be pi r square or you can say p into pi d square by 4 correct. So, from here we have to calculate what is this a small p. So, we can easily find out so, this a small p should be equal to your this p capital P divided by pi d square by 4. So, what we got because how this things is coming because this uh, resistance which is developing in the well material this resistance force is balanced by this internal pressure force how this things is coming you should understand this concept. Okay. So, here we are applying this equation of equilibrium. So, by equation of equilibrium what condition we should apply here? Here we will use summation of force along horizontal direction should be equal to 0, should be equal to 0. So, what are the force here uh, generally acting? So, one force which is acting uh, which is tensile in nature which is uh, on weld in weld zone that is generally your this force P, another force is due to the internal pressure which is actually your internal pressure into its projected cross sectional area that is pi r square which I am showing in this uh, equation number you can say equation number let us this is 2 this is equation number 1. So, by using this equation number 1 and 2 what you can get? We can get this a small pressure 
is equal to your this is small p represent the pressure which is actually your p divided by your pi d square by 4. What is p we got? This p we got as sigma t into well cross sectional area into its efficiency. So, this is generally balanced by this internal pressure force pi d square by 4. Okay. Now, if we just put all these things, so pressure internal pressure uh, P will be your equal to your sigma T is given as directly here I am putting all this value then it will be more clear to you. So, here we are getting sigma T is 85 MPA is given. So, 85 MPA once we convert it into this 85 MPA it is itself here all the things I am putting in uh, millimeter. So, 85 MPA is equal to your 85 Newton per mm square. This you should keep it in mind. Here cross sectional area A w equal to your pi is d is uh, generally is given uh, d uh, is 2.5 meter 2.5 into 1000 I am writing. So, pi uh, d this is pi d and its thickness is t which is generally 12 thickness is t 12 and efficiency is also given as 0.85 divided by pi is diameter is given as 2.5 into 1000. Okay. This divided by 2 you can write whole square. So, from here generally we can get the internal pressure or you can say permissible pressure of this cylinder will be equal to your 1.39 Newton per millimeter square or you can say 1.39 MPa mega Pascal. This you should keep it in mind. So, for designing this cylinder generally uh, once you manufacture a cylinder based on this uh, types of thickness and this types of uh, well material permissible tensile stress then this cylinder internal pressure should not exceed you see 1.39 MPa. If it is more than this then there is a chance of failure of that cylinder. So, that is why what happens uh, the uh, by this uh, types of methodology once a structure subjected to some well joint then we can easily find out what should be its internal pressure or if internal pressure is given in the uh, uh, cylinder then what happens or internal pressure is still, uh, given in this uh, chamber uh, you can say or you can see this gas cylinder then what should be the thickness what should be the weld uh, material permissible stress that also we can beforehand find out. So, based on these things if we just uh, do the welding and if we just decide the thickness of the plate then our uh, structure will be safe side this you should keep it in mind. Hmm. Now, we will discuss about a strength of parallel fillet weld. So, a parallel fillet weld what I have already told you a parallel fillet weld which is subjected to a force you can see in this figure A uh, this force is generally uh, parallel to the direction of the length of the weld. Okay. This is the length of the weld. So, here the load is also which is parallel to this uh, length of this weld. This, uh, this you should keep it in mind. Fillet well joint which is called uh, parallel fillet well joint. Now, here in case of parallel fillet well joint one thing you should keep it in mind in case of parallel fillet well joint there generally we use two different terminology to find out the dimension of this fillet weld. So, these two terms to find out this uh, dimension of the fillet weld one is called uh, leg H, another one is called throat T. So, here the size of this weld uh, generally is specified uh, by this leg length and uh, this throat thickness is very important uh, parameter where generally most of the failure occur in case of fillet weld joint. That is why T is also another uh, important uh, dimension this you should keep it in mind. But the fillet size generally we specified by this leg length uh, is. The length of the is weld uh, generally uh, the length of each of the two equal side is called uh, leg. So, what, let this is a fillet weld which I am showing here. 
let this is a flat well. We know this flat well generally have a triangular shape. So, you see from here to here, this is called one leg, this is called another leg. So, in case of flat well, we generally uh, consider this, this uh, two leg uh, are equal to each other. Okay. This you should keep it in mind. So, here uh, these things uh, I have written also, this leg length also generally consider as the thickness as equal to the thickness of the plate. That means, whatever the plate we are going to join, whatever the plate we are going to join, let this is one plate, this is another plate. Okay. So, so, what should be this leg length h? So, this leg length h generally always keep this thing in mind, this leg length h generally consider for uh, design consideration which is equal to the thickness of this, which is equal to the thickness of this plate. That is why here I have written as a rule the leg length h is equal to the plate thickness. The throat thickness generally uh, is the dimension which is generally uh, at a angle of theta with horizontal axis, this you should keep it in mind. So, throat thickness generally acting at an angle of 45 degree, which that means theta equal to 45 degree with this horizontal axis. So, whatever the distance here we got this T throat thickness. So, here uh, generally throat thickness I am representing in terms of T. So, a small t and plate thickness here I am representing let us is 1. Okay. Plate thickness I am representing in terms of is 1. Okay. So, it says that this throat thickness generally makes a angle 45 degree with horizontal, horizontal uh, line you can say. So, whatever the dimension we got here, this is the minimum dimension of this uh, weld you can say. As this dimension is the minimum dimension of this weld, that is why whatever the cross section we got in this uh, throat thickness region, that is the minimum cross section of the weld you can say. So, in this throat thickness as it has minimum cross section, that is why uh, most of the failure in case of fillet weld generally occur along this minimum cross section uh, zone. Why in minimum cross section zone? Because you know uh, we know that stress is equal to your uh, load by cross sectional area. So, if this cross sectional area is a small, that means if the cross sectional area is uh, decrease, if the cross sectional area is decrease, then this stress magnitude increase. So, that is why where there is minimum cross section, there the stress will be more, that means then what happens? The chances of failure will be more in that section. That is why here I have written the failure of the fillet well generally occur due to shear along the minimum cross section at throat because in minimum cross section zone generally maximum shear stress will be developed. Uh, how this maximum shear stress is developed in uh, throat thickness direction that also I will show you in details. So, the shear failure of weld uh, here I am showing the shear failure generally uh, is why it is shear failure because in this throat thickness, in this throat thickness whatever the area we will get here you can see this area will subjected to a force which is generally parallel to the surface. So, one we know once a force which is acting, once a force which is acting parallel to parallel to the surface then that types of load whatever the stress is developed that stress is called shear stress. Because here as this force which is parallel to the throat surface area that is why what happens whatever the stress here it will be developed that will be shear stress. So, due to this shear stress whatever the failure will be taken place here that is called shear failure. How this uh, strength of this uh, of uh, parallel fillet weld is calculated that also I am going to show you. Okay. Let us one side first we are considering one side fillet weld, but uh, we know uh, one side fillet weld is not preferable, we should use both side fillet weld, we should use both side fillet weld correct. So, first of all we will calculate based on one side after that we will convert it into both side fillet weld. Okay. So, we will calculate uh, the strength of this uh, fillet weld now. 
So, for calculating the strength of this flat weld, so here let the throat thickness here I am representing in terms of T which I am showing in this figure. Okay. So, here I am just further I am drawing little bit bigger way. So, let this is the plate weld. So, we know this throat thickness here this is your T throat thickness T which is generally acting at angle theta which is 45 degree and this is the leg length H. We know this leg length H is equal to so this H is the leg length and T is the throat thickness T is the throat thickness, throat thickness. So, what should be the cross sectional area of this throat thickness region that we should know if it is subjected to a uh, force which is parallel to this throat thickness direction or you can say which is parallel to this well direction. So, here we have to find out the throat thickness area. So, here throat thickness cross sectional area will be your uh, I am representing A T which will be your uh, you can say uh, throat thickness into length of the weld. So, length of the weld here it is given as let us L length of the weld. So, here it is, it is called length of the weld. So, length of the weld and its throat thickness this throat thickness will give us the cross sectional area of the throat uh, region of this weld. So, this cross sectional area is subjected to a external force P. So, if this is subjected to external force P, then what should be the shear force on this throat section that also we can easily find. So, the resisting shear stress, so resisting shear stress let us its tau. So, this tau is the shear stress, shear stress here I am writing. So, shear stress tau on this uh, throat uh, cross section will be your this force external uh, 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 due to this external force whatever the internal force developed in this uh, throat uh, cross section let that also will be equal to your P. So, this P divided by throat cross sectional area. So, what are the things you are we are getting here? So, we are getting here P by T into L. But this T we can represent in terms of uh, in terms of uh, what it is called a leg length H. How? Because here you know that uh, T by H, T by H we can write as this T by H will be equal to your cos 45 degree, correct? T by H is equal to your cos 45 degree. So, we can write T is equal to your from this figure itself you can see. So, T we can write as uh, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 into what it is called 1 by root 2 into uh, H. So, throat thickness we can say this 1 by root 2 its value will be generally 0 0.707 into H. So, here what we are getting? So, shear stress in a fillet will be tau equal to your P divided by P divided by your 0 0.707 is into L, correct? This you can get from this equation. So, what is the strength equation of this parallel fillet weld? So, the strength equation of this parallel fillet weld we can write P is equal to your 0 0.707 A is into L into tau. This is called the strength equation of a parallel fillet weld. Once there is only single weld, but we know for a uh, fillet weld to be in uh, proper strength, generally both side fillet welding is required. So, if there is if there are two different fillet weld both side of this vertical fillet, then this this P strength. So, for both side fillet weld for both side fillet weld here on things you should keep it in mind. Here this P should be your this that means this strength equation will be your 2 into 0 0.707 A is into L into tau. So, this we are getting as 1.414 A is into L into tau. 
So, this is called the strength equation for parallel fillet well, strength equation for parallel fillet well. Okay. So, based on this strength equation, whatever the length we will get, generally for uh, designing purpose, we should add 15 millimeter mole length over this L, uh, because this 15 millimeter that is why I have written at the end of this slide you can say, in determining the required length of the weld, 15 millimeter should be added to the length of each weld to allow for starting and stopping of the well run. This you should keep it in mind. So, this 50 millimeter uh, well length we should add for each weld. This you should keep it in mind. So, whatever the L we will get here with this once we add this 15 millimeter, then what happens? Uh, the final length whatever the length we will get that should be our uh, final design length. This you should keep it in mind. Uh, so, next lecture I will start from here. I will solve different different problem on this parallel fillet oil as well as I will discuss about transverse fillet oil and how to calculate strength of this transverse fillet oil. That details also I will discuss uh, in uh, next class. Thank you.